The Avengers have been the biggest cinema attraction for years and are without a doubt the most famous superheroes on the planet. And they fought everything from aliens to Thanos, even to an army of androids bent on human extinction. Hell, they've even fought each other. But as powerful as these superheroes are, they are not immortal. And some have fallen in battle. And this video is going to go over the 5 best deaths of the Avengers. Now this video is only going to go over the Avengers deaths in the MCU and we're not going to count any other media. We're also not going to count any of the deaths from the Thanos snap as these weren't real deaths and to be honest there's not really much to talk about them other than Spider-Man's of course which was actually pretty dramatic. I don't want to go, I don't want to go, sir please, please I don't want to go, I don't want to go. But we'll only be counting the true permanent deaths. Number 5 Black Widow now, a cynical man would say that Black Widow's most important role in the Avengers is that she's a woman and that the team needed at least one chick to make the franchise work because it wouldn't really work if it was just a bunch of guys. And since I am a cynical man, that's exactly what I'm saying. So it was a bit of a shock when they killed her off. Admittedly, there is now Scarlet Witch, so there is another hot redhead to fill her position. But still, it's a shame that she's gone and very surprising. And although Black Widow may have just started as the token girl on the team, she has actually become so much more than that and become a character in her own right with a dark and mysterious past that she's trying to atone for. My point being that she is a character that we have grown to care about and watching her sacrifice her own life to save not only billions of humans but her best friend, well it shows just how far a character has come in the real world from her essentially just being eye candy to being a serious character. And in the MC universe, it shows how far she's come from being a mindless assassin to being someone who truly cares about the people around her. As we all know, she of course sacrificed her life to get the Soul Stone so they could undo Thanos' snap. It was either her or Hawkeye, and both of them wanting to do it because both of them love each other and are willing to sacrifice their lives. But as Black Widow says, Hawkeye's got kids, she doesn't, and they need a father. But even with that being said, it's still an amazing sacrifice she makes and not a lot of people would be able to do it. And although we don't know the full extent of Black Widow's past deeds, at least not until her solo film comes out, I still think it's safe to say that her giving her life to save trillions of humans and aliens that Thanos killed, well, surely that would atone for any sins that she could have possibly committed. Number 4. Quicksilver he was the first Avenger to die, though sadly not the last. And I know a few of you might be saying he wasn't technically an Avenger. He was. He fought alongside them and he gave his life defending the innocent. If that's not an Avenger, I don't know what is. Now this death just came out of nowhere when I was watching it in the cinema. And it was really just out of the scene. It was like, why did this happen? But this sacrifice shows his real character. And I think that was the point. They wanted to show that Quicksilver wasn't a terrorist or a supervillain, he was just someone who was looking for justice for the wrongs that had been done to him. But when he sees a boy and Hawkeye about to die and being shot down by Stark Tech, well, he doesn't even hesitate to sacrifice his own life to save theirs. He didn't see that coming. Now, it is true that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are both in the MCU and the X-Men universe. And so that kind of needed to be sorted because it was a bit weird having them in both. And so this death is most likely just to get rid of the character existing in two universes and any legal issues that may come from it down the line. Plus, if we're completely honest, the X-Men did do a much better job with the character. Or at least a much better job at showing his powers off. And the fact that the X-Men then killed Scarlet Witch off in the X-Men films, well that does kind of cement the idea that it was just to sort out these possible legal issues. Now that's probably the reason he died in the real world, but the fact that they took that and adapted it so well so that Quicksilver's death went into the story and showed his character so much and showed what these people were willing to sacrifice, well I think it just added so much to this film. I mean it does feel like his speed could have just moved the bullets or just moved Hawkeye and the kid rather than being hit by the bullets, yeah that is true. But this sacrifice added a new layer to the film and to Wanda's story and character and her arc through the rest of the films. And because of that and the other reasons, I think this is a very powerful scene that really added to the film and I'm actually really glad they kept it in. It's a real shame that Quicksilver had to die of course, but it did make the film so much better. Number 3. 
Gamora. Again, she was never officially dubbed an Avenger, like Spider-Man was, but again, like Quicksilver, she fought alongside the Avengers and she was willing to give her life to save people. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all it takes to qualify her. Now, Gamora's death is very similar to Black Widow's death, except for the fact that Gamora did not choose to sacrifice her own life. In fact, she actually tried to take her own life just to stop Thanos from being able to use her to acquire the Soul Stone. But there was no escape for Gamora, even though she tried, because Thanos had the Reality Stone and basically was just more powerful than her. And there was actually no other option for Thanos, because the Soul Stone demands that he sacrifice someone he loved in order to get it. And the only person he loved in the universe was Gamora, so she was literally the only one he could sacrifice to get him the Soul Stone. And much like the others on the list, when you see Gamora die, it's a bit like, wow, where did that come from? I mean, we all know that she's going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, so we pretty much thought she was safe. Especially considering that in the film, she actually tried to kill herself before, and Thanos saved her life. Which makes you feel like, oh, he's going to keep her alive, even though she wants to die and not give him information. But in the end, it was actually Thanos who killed her. And in doing so, it actually showed a different side to Thanos. And that's why this is such an important death. Obviously, we still see Thanos as a monster. I mean, he's a mass murderer. But this adds another layer to his character. And although we still think he's evil, we see that he has a heart. And this is something that Hollywood rarely touches on. Especially in the MCU, they're very much a monster of the week type villains. These extra layers are what really make a villain engaging. And whenever you actually see an abusive father or parent in a Hollywood film, they're often shown as just being evil or enjoying the cruelty to their children. But in real life, it's not that black and white. There are a lot of shades of grey when it comes to cruelty. And a lot of parents may actually abuse their children, but at the same time, they're actually kind to their children at different moments. Which is actually worse for the child, because it really conflicts and screws them up, as they can't tell whether they should hate them or love them because they're getting both sides of it as Gamora's relationship with her father is a testament to. On the one hand, she sees the love, and that's why she was loyal for all those years. On the other hand, he's an abusive mass murderer, and she needs to get away from him. It's difficult, confusing, and conflicted, and it adds a lot of layers to Thanos and to Gamora, and it's actually one of the most interesting relationships we have in the MCU regarding a hero and a supervillain. And the only problem I actually have with this death was that after they did it, they brought a past version of Gamora to the future. Which, if I'm honest, is just a bit of a cop-out. I mean, Gamora dying was surprising and it was powerful, and it was a great scene. And then they just kind of ruined it. Yes, I thought they would resurrect her, and I want Gamora to come back, I do. But seriously, you either bring back the real Gamora, or you don't. Because a duplicate just isn't as good. I mean, from a lesser franchise, yeah, we could swallow it. But we all expect, and I think we all demand, a bit better from the MCU. Number 2. Vision A death so powerful that it didn't just happen once, but twice. Now, admittedly, we all knew his death was coming. I mean, we've known ever since Vision was created with the Mind Stone in his head. After all, we all knew Thanos was going to collect them, so obviously he was going to have to rip it out of Vision's head when he came to Earth. But since one of the main stories of the Infinity War film was removing this stone from his head so it could safely be destroyed without killing Vision, well, I think we were all kind of hoping that the plan would actually work and Vision wouldn't have to die. And I also think that we all knew that Vision wasn't going to survive. But the story is done in such a way that you're really hoping he survives and that he and Wanda get their happy ending. But sadly, it's not to be. And one thing that I really love about this scene is that it shows just how powerful Thanos has become, as nothing can stop him at this point. Not even death itself can stop him from doing whatever he wants, as he has complete power over who lives and dies. Vision's dead? Not a problem. Resurrected. That is literally God power. And it shows just how much control he has over the universe, which really means there was absolutely nothing that the Avengers could do to stop him. There was no way they could stop that snap. Once he had those stones in his gauntlet, it was over. So it was actually pretty stupid of Thanos to then destroy the Infinity Stones, because that's why he died and that's why all his work was undone. He really should have kept them. But in regards to Vision's death, I do have to say that although I'm putting it on this list because yes, he did die for real, that 100% happened, I don't think he's gone for good. 
In the comics, he actually dies a few times, and the vision just goes into a sort of repair sequence mode, and it's kind of like him being in a coma and slowly fixing himself, and eventually he returns from the grave. So I think something like that will happen in the MCU, and the vision will return. And I really hope it does happen because I actually quite like his character. It's really grown on me since he was first made. And I really do want his story with Wanda to have a happy ending. Number 1. Iron Man We all knew this would be number 1, and for good reason, because it's the best death. During the endgame fight when it was every Avenger versus Thanos' army, the Avengers are all desperately trying to get the Infinity Stones back in the time tunnel and away from Thanos. And for some reason, Iron Man is the only one who thinks to use the stones against Thanos, which is really weird because it's the first thing we all thought of when we saw that scene. I mean, we were watching it in the cinema thinking, that's the most powerful weapon in the universe, why aren't you using them? I mean, they don't have to use all of them in the gauntlet at once, of course, that takes a lot of power and it nearly killed the Hulk, but they could just use one or two of the Infinity Stones. They're literally called the Infinity Stones because their power is nearly infinite. And that's exactly what Thanos does when he's outpowered by Captain Marvel. But to be fair, we can overlook this because watching the Avengers all work together was just amazing. And I guess the filmmakers just wanted to show every Avenger working together, using their superpowers to defeat Thanos, rather than just relying on the Infinity Stones, which probably is a good choice. Now I have said on this list a couple times that I was surprised by the deaths. And I know that sounds like I'm repeating myself, but come on, who wasn't surprised by some of these? But Iron Man's death? That was completely shell-shocking. I mean, Marvel has been saying that some of the Avengers would die in these last few films. Yeah, we knew that they would. But I never for a second thought that one of them would be Iron Man. After all, he's the most famous and well-loved of the MCU characters. Something which is mirrored by Robert Downey Jr. being the highest paid actor of all time. Which means Marvel should want to keep him, and he should want to stay. Although I guess after he's made a couple hundred million, he's probably not really that worried about cash anymore. And maybe Marvel had to let him go for one very important reason. You can't afford me. After all, the MCU just saved 50 odd million a film, which could be put into the effects budget, so at least it won't go to waste. But regardless of why they actually killed him off, it is a powerful and emotional death in the universe. Not only because it was surprising, but because it brings the story full circle. This all started with Iron Man way back when, and it all ends with him. Or at least this chapter in the MCU story ends. Obviously it's going to continue. And his tearful goodbye with Peter Parker is just heartbreaking. They just reunited, and then one of them died once again. In fact, in many respects, I actually found that more heartbreaking than seeing him say goodbye to Pepper. And this death also cements Iron Man in Marvel history with his heroic sacrifice, which literally saved the universe. As Thanos said, he was going to wipe out everything this time. And as Doctor Strange said, if it wasn't for the fact that Iron Man had done this, they all would have been screwed. So it was an amazing thing to do, an amazing death, and it really just brought the film all tied together. And I think I speak for us all when I say that my inner fanboy just loved his final line. And my only real complaint about Iron Man dying is that they had the Time Stone right there, literally to hand, and they could have used it to just resurrect Tony Stark. I mean, we know it's possible because Thanos did the exact same with Vision. I mean, obviously that would undermine the drama and the gravitas of the scene, and it would also kind of ruin the film's ending. So I get why the filmmakers didn't do it. I'm not saying it was a bad idea. I'm just saying it's a rather glaring plot hole. And I feel like they should have addressed it, you know, at least mentioned that, oh, they can't resurrect him for such and such reason, just to give it an extra bit of making sense, because the way they did it is just really weird, because it's like, why doesn't anyone say, why don't we just bring him back? A lot of them might not have known how the Time Stone worked, but Doctor Strange definitely did. I mean, he literally used it to resurrect people in his film. But other than that rather large plot hole, it's a really epic death and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I really think it made the movie work so much better than if he had survived. Sounds pretty cruel to say that, but it is true. And that is the five best deaths of the Avengers in the MCU. What do you think of this list, and which death was your personal favourite? Be sure to let us know in the comments, 
And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mass Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.